Okay, so it's been a while since I've done the news as I see it. Um, so I'm just going to go through the headlines as I see them. Okay, so there is an appointee for the Supreme Court. Uh, much of the same old, same old. However, I guess the big thing is that uh, it's, she supports LGBTQ rights, and obviously a Republican would never do that, so why would a Republican nominee? I don't agree with that premise. Uh, people are people, and judges do things for reasons, um, whatever they happen to be. Okay, so the uh, new Police Reform Act, they're going to sign it. That's not really news, but it's still there because people want to talk about it before it actually happens. But... Uh, Basically, they're going to look at ways of um, increasing the cost of policing and uh, they may involve more people in the process. Not sure how the blue wall will be reduced or um, what type of actual training programs because each local police force is going to set its own training programs. Or the idea to do that at a federal level it may work for the FBI and uh, a couple of the U.S. agencies. But um, usually when these things happen, you often hear about it happening at a local level um, for, you know, police killings and whatever, not necessarily because of poor police training, but because of an array of training and police responding situationally. Again, I, I think that with what happened in, in Minneapolis, uh, there's definitely questions to be answered, but we don't. Like, it, it doesn't really make sense why it's happened in the perspective of all police shootings. A lot of the police shootings, uh, whether they're in Canada or the United States, uh, they happen out of a uh, situational uh, problem. Like, cops just don't go up, pull up, they're going to shoot people. Usually there's uh, an assault or an attempt to um, resist arrest. And, uh, like, what happened at the Wendy's where the police um, responded instead of keeping it at a level of dialogue, they escalate it to an arrest. Um, the police were empowered to, to do the arrest. They weren't required to do the arrest. Again, that would be the local police um, policies or instructions. They were both fired, so they may not have followed those policies or instructions. Like in many workplaces, policies get broken. It's just in this case, it results in the loss of lives. But um, I, I, I do think that what it comes down to is that police need to see it as they aren't required to arrest people. Um, again, and if it's not a felony or people aren't at actual risk, then there's no need to arrest people. You get their information and you follow up on it. Uh, arrest damages, they, it damages people's lives. So the court process damages people's lives. It's not just the outcome of this person did this and this is a sentence. There's a lot of non um, direct damages to people's lives and there's a fear and in this case the person went to a flight mode um, could the police have just let the drunk guy run away sure they could have were they legally able to do that there may have been legal restrictions on them letting someone out of their custody once they were in their custody so they were legally responsible for that person once they started uh, looking at the arrest so if the police didn't have that responsibility and they were told okay if, if a non-dangerous offender tries to escape or flee and you have a means of getting their contact information just let it go um, deal with it later uh, we'll do a we'll get a warrant and we'll do an arrest at a later point um, you know if the guy was so intoxicated he couldn't stay awake how did he manage to fight off two cops and run away you know like it's it's a question they had his car they probably had his license plate so in that case you know it's they they probably had enough information to, to get a hold of them at a later point um, obviously that situation was very developmental. They tried to make an arrest and the guy grabbed the taser, took off. Cops are like, I'm getting my taser back. Um, and then it was, he's shooting at me. I'm shooting back at him. He has, again, the cops escalated the force. It goes back to the police prerogative of using force plus one and the policing standards and otherwise, the police are always going to have the ability to escalate the use of force um, to one higher degree. So someone being resistive, that allows the police to be assaultive. Um, someone using non-lethal force or potentially lethal force, 
that gives the police the ability to use lethal force. Um, and it's the allowance of use of lethal force because the police are not expected to back down. They're always going to escalate force. And de-escalation is really what the problem is. Police do not have proper training for de-escalation, nor do they have the incentive to de-escalate. So if police were on a merits basis, for every use of force they had to use to arrest somebody, they lost points. And for every arrest they used without using force, they got a pay bonus or um, they kept their job, um, then they would probably use non-physical methods and they would take more time. Police response times would go up, yada, yada, yada. But um, a lot of police might not even try to make an arrest unless it was a serious situation. So again, cops are trying to do law enforcement as opposed to do policing. Law enforcement is about you see a law, you throw the book at somebody. Policing is about being in a community and trying to keep that community functioning and not to break down the community. Um, so community policing is really important. It's not really being done. There's more law enforcement methods. Again, uh, Trump, he's like, yeah, what we're going to do, we're going to give them a lot more equipment to do their jobs, but also we're going to pair more personnel with them. Again, I think most of it's situational. People freak out, especially with intoxicated people. Police engage with intoxicated people. People aren't gonna be thinking straight. Same with people with mental health issues. If police engage with people with mental health issues, they're not actually seeing the situation how the cops think they're presenting the situation. Same with intoxication. A no perfectly normal discussion can provoke emotions in people and they're gonna respond in a very hostile way because of the influence of drugs or alcohol. So if police are trained to detect these behaviors, which they are in some cases, then they should be also trained in how to respond positively in those situations to create non-confrontational um, interactions. Nonetheless, will this make a change in policing? Not right away. Um, is it a positive step? Maybe, we'll see what happens with it, but it just seems like a public relations interaction and uh, you know, we'll see what happens with it. Uh, activist goes missing. Reported uh, sexual assault, is it? Uh, yeah, she had reported some type of uh, action and then she disappeared. No idea what that was all about. Again, more, um, Talking about the Wendy's killing, they burned that that Wendy's down. Um, again, I don't know why they burned the Wendy's down. I'm thinking maybe um, the person in the Wendy's is like this person is blocking the Wendy's drive-through. Cops come and like, yeah, we're gonna arrest you for falling asleep in your car. That's a DUI in the U.S. That's uh, can be serious, but in this case, you know, you could see move the car away. Um, maybe police could drive the person home rather than to the drunk tank. But again, it's a legal issue of once you bring somebody into custody, you take it into your control, you're responsible for that person. And police generally like people in a cell when they're responsible for their uh, well-being. It's just the expectations due to legal repercussions. And, you know, it's not how police do the jobs, but again, w with the idea of uh, qualified immunity or otherwise, Police, in order to preserve the qualified immunity, have to follow the expectations. And the general expectations are that people get arrested and put in jail until the problem goes away. Uh, the general expectation for qualified immunity is, eh, no problem, bro. It's just a law. Go and do your thing. Um, don't get into no trouble the next time. That may have been how it worked in the past, but when things became more and more legalized over time, 1980s, 1990s, police no longer want to put themselves in danger. And they also have the social expectation and the, the, the social um, influence and, and the social contract, the way they, they think it exists is that, yeah, when we see crimes, we gotta get rid of the criminals. I don't think that's true, um, but they definitely have expectations to be out there arresting people. And as soon as that expectation is gone and 
they actually respond rather than a complainant actually complaining on a basis of yeah i don't like this get rid of this guy um, which is basically what happened at the wendy's um, into a instead of getting rid of the guy hey well, the way we get rid of people is to arrest them and charge them and, and drag them through the criminal justice system, throw them in jail uh, so that they learn not to do that again. And then they get out of jail and do it again. So there's a disconnect in what people want to happen from police uh, enforcement. Again, the complainant is just like, get the guy out, out of my sight. The police are like, well, if I'm doing this, then I got to do it the whole way, you know? Um, but in this case, it's like as soon as anybody attacks the police, they're a marked person. And an attack against one officer is an attack against all officers, the whole blue wall and the mentality. It's, it's part of the professional code, even if it's unwritten. And that may not be all police, but there's definitely cops out there who have that mindset. It's the brotherhood. Oh, what else is on here? More Black Lives Matter. Again, this is all not really news, but for people that really are pushing this issue, I'll say right up front, I don't believe in race. I think it's a idea that's pushed in society, especially American society, where you like to segregate and separate people. We're all human. That's my perspective. Um, people say that it's black culture. Uh, I, can, I can understand that. There's plenty of subcultures, um, but... I think that the problem really is clinging to a perspective of race when it doesn't really exist. And it's indoctrinated into people's systems. It's part of the US identity to have these racializations. And the racialization of people is what the real problem is. It's not about rights for people of specific races because that's still pushing the idea of race, racial, it's still racializing people. Um, and it, that's not going away anytime soon, but Personally, I don't like seeing all this because I think it's a loss no matter what. To me, the message is that there's black people and that's black people don't get treated good because a lot of them commit crimes and get caught doing it. But and then all the other people that don't do those crimes end up getting punished for the like 20 percent of the, the population or 2 percent or 5 percent of the population. Um, I don't think a lot of the people getting arrested are innocent. Uh, maybe they are, but uh, I don't think that's the case. I think that in some areas where black culture exists, there are high crime rates because of poverty, and it's due to uh, not having a lot of good employment. It's getting better, I think, over time. And the, the idea of education and otherwise, it's just part of the process. But within all this, they're stereotyping themselves and other people are stereotyping them and that's just pushing the the prerogative um i think that people that actually see the, the the big picture understand race does not exist it's a cultural creation and the only cure for these problems of discrimination because discrimination comes from negative feelings associated with stereotypes and same with hate hate comes from so negative associations from past uh, experiences, archetypes, engram type things. Uh, and it's just the way in which humans categorize information. So the liberation is to understand people are people and people deserve equal treatment based upon their actions. Um, and I don't know if, if in the situation of Atlanta, it was due to racism or not. Um, from a perspective of just the policing mentality. Um, I think the cop panicked. Um, the guy had a taser, he chose to escalate the use of force because his taser wasn't working. And he was scared of the taser. He thought it presented a, a danger to him because if he got taken out of action and he's already grabbed one weapon, then, you know, is the guy just gonna run away? I think it was a judgment error, but, um, I don't feel it was premeditated. It wasn't a premeditated murder. It was a very reactionary murder. Floyd is confusing because there's questions that have to be answered on why that happened the way it did. And like, if there wasn't the intent to murder, then there was a serious disconnect, like a, a stationary seizure or, or something. Um, maybe it was the, the fumes from the car. I don't know. 
Okay, so more of the uh, death, police killings, and un unjustified again. These things have been happening the same way, but it's actually getting media attention. I think it's good, but I don't like the narrative of race. I, I think that, you know, again, the whole BLM movement isn't going to be happy with my perspective, but I do think everybody matters, and I don't I think it's this race or that race, and it's really just a matter of policing methods. And that's with the Police Reform Act. Hopefully there will be some forward movement, but it's not going to be enough. It's not going to change things, but it will help a little bit. Um, bringing notice to these things is fine, but uh, I, I studied a little bit of anthropology in university. I have a minor in anthropology. So I studied social and cultural anthropology. Um, that was one of the things I studied. And what I know is that when you start having groups or categorizations of people, yeah, positive and negative associations with those people. Um, to me, the message is just reinforcing the idea that um, people of color, black people, it's creating them, first of all. Um, some people might say they already exist, but no, everything is created. Everything is going to be formed. It's, it's a blank slate, and to construct identities, we have information that we're subjected to, and we associate that information. So the association here is that these people get into situations and they're killed. That just reinforces that idea. It doesn't take away that idea. Um, okay, so here's here's a Golden State Killer Suspect. So this is a betrayal of uh, D'Angelo. Um, oh, I think I've been going a little too long here now. Chicago Nash Lakefront Trail, wonderful. Second wave. This is actual not news yet, but it's something to keep an eye on. So, yeah, cases are still going up. I think it's something like 20 states or something like that. Cases never came down. They just kept going up, and they're still going up. Um, with things reopening now, there's a real risk of, of the case count going up. Um, Mary Trump, the president's niece. First time I've heard of it. Um, and that's a book. Apparently, I thought that Melena Trump released a book or something like that, too. And I remember reading something about that, but maybe it was this Mary Trump book uh, who was talking about Melena or something. But there's something very relevant. I can't remember what it was, but it was just more Trumpisms. Um, you know, uh, identity cult. Um, whatever side that is on that, but uh, characterization side on to the election, just election propaganda. Um Oh, wow. Okay, just a stupid story. I have no idea why CNN is covering this. It's like talking about eBay. It's like an attack on eBay or something. Bad press for eBay because of a former employee. <laughs> just craziness. Um, and that's nice. The seniors thing has been going along. Uh, it's been happening with uh, in Canada, too, where... A lot of talk in government protecting seniors, you know, pre preventing elder abuse. There's an aging population, obviously. Um, just a random uh, fighter crash. Uh, I'm surprised they're flying F-15 still, um, but they are. They're apparently really good jets, uh, even 30 years later. And same with uh, the Raptors. It's only been 20 some odd years now. But uh, they lost 17, they've restructured them. Um, there's potential issues, but it's still their, their front line. I guess the uh, F-22 was replacing the F-15, but uh, for some reason I've been getting a lot of uh, aircraft um, news stories, not sure why. Um, and uh, New York might get shut back down I uh, like, if you guys behave well and follow the rules and recommendations, then we'll keep the city open, but otherwise we're going to have to shut it down again. That's not news yet, but it could be news. Uh, As uh, Beijing uh, shut down again uh, due to fears in uh, China of a second wave reemerging there also. Uh, so again, there's this fog of war regarding exactly what happened with, with China. Uh, a lot of people say the numbers and situation isn't being reported the way it actually is happening. But uh, now the U.S. is also in the situation. Obviously, the U.S. got hit a lot hard, a lot harder 
than uh, China did, according to the official numbers. Okay, still the whole Capitol Hill, Seattle thing going on. Um, I, a lot of what I've seen with this has been overblown in some of the forums I've, I've been on. People have been wanting to go in there and break up the uh, action. Um, but I, I haven't actually seen anything that um, is bad about that situation. So I, I don't know of reports of anything. The only thing is that police response times to that area have uh, been delayed. Like they're three times as long now. I'm not sure why, but it could just be because a lot of people were there. Uh, they can't get through. But uh, yeah, you're, you're, there, there are things that are going on with policing in the U.S. And uh, New York, for instance, is uh, disbanding their anti-crime unit. So... They're plainclothes cops. They're getting rid of them apparently, but uh, there's no telling. Like the cops are being reassigned, so it's the idea of sort of like uh, the the idea was with the airborne in Canada. Um, the airborne, uh, I'm not sure if it was a battalion, but there was hazing problems, so they disbanded that whole unit, and people ended up getting reassigned. Um, does it get rid of the problem or does it spread it because if there's a problem and you move everybody everywhere you're going to spread those people to other areas uh, doesn't necessarily get rid of the problem but it does get rid of the awareness of a continuation of that same problem because the it's disconnected more this is just more and more and more and more jail and it's police news um, or anti-police news I guess um, a lot of times when I look at the news it's like or at least mainstream media it's police news so it's all the stuff that is all about policing actions and enforcements um, the oppression and subjection of people uh, rather than actual news stories about what's happening in the world I'm talking about the system and this is what the system does as opposed to these are new things uh, in the system uh, rather than the same thing, same message being repeated over and over and over again as a form of indoctrination and social control. Um, so apparently, even colleges and universities are opening things up. Uh, no more SAT or ACT scores. Uh, but I guess that's for people that were supposed to be graduating this year and couldn't actually write or they had a really bad year um, due to not being in school. Um, not sure what's going to happen with that one. Okay, so yeah, uh, more coronavirus, Black Lives Matter, um, just more Trump. So I'm actually this is really like oh, it's like just the same same crap. Um, lockdown. Oh, North Korea is frustrated at failed diplomacy. <laughs> Again? Um, reset on relations. Death. Now, this is more cops are being killed and getting uh, media attention on it. Uh, still. Still just more protests and policing and COVID. Unemployment. Okay, so that's still a problem. Um, but this one's talking about how people get more money being unemployed than they do working, which may stimulate people not to be employed if there were jobs. Still Floyd. This is two weeks later, something like that. Uh, three weeks. Putin says U.S. in deep internal crisis. Okay, so this is New York Times. I'm going to get hit on that. Uh, it's not going to let me watch it on this link, but I am going to see if I can go to this link because um, this is a news story that stands out to me. So deep domestic crisis. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, I don't want ads, though. Uh, let's... Uh, yeah, so I couldn't watch that either because they're like, we got to give you ads. Got to give you ads. Um, well, I'm not going to read your story. 
way to get customers or way to get people and subscribers. Just uh, do an ad wall. Um, and I'm okay with ads usually. I just don't like a big prompt coming up. Ah, uh, fires. Okay, so this is another. You gotta watch this because uh, so we're potentially leaving the solar minimum now. Won't be able to know until a few years from now. But uh, we had really hot weather for being in the solar minimum. Again, the solar weather is only going to influence earth based weather a certain amount, atmospheric conditions, yada, yada, yada. Um, but already Siberia uh had massively like 80 degree weather like a month ago um massive forest fires so there's a real chance that this year could be a, a major a major uh fire year uh for the northern hemisphere i gotta end because i think i'm emptying my stomach's contents right now um more talk Oh, what's this one here? And her first house primary endorsement. Elliot Engel. Um, there's uh, more election talk. Uh, COVID. Uh, race, race. Um, election. Confederate monuments. That's another thing. Thomas Jefferson. Okay, again, I, I, I thank Tim Pool for actually raising this uh, issue. Tim Pool had uh, mentioned that uh, Thomas Jefferson's statue was torn down. What's next? Washington, yada, yada. Um, basically, the idea is anybody who ever owned a slave in the past, which is probably like every rich person uh, from the past, and every rich person was the only influential people. So it's like historical genocide of. of uh, English English history or like European history it's like all the rich Europeans basically were slave owners um, so you just kind of erase that entire history um, what history is left at that point um, so I, I I didn't agree with what happened in the Ukraine either regarding destruction of communist monuments um, I think that people need to understand a perspective of the history they don't need to destroy the past and i think people that need to destroy the past are not mature um i don't think glorifying bad ideas is good either but you need to take perspective that something that exists from the past is representative of the past and we shouldn't be censoring and removing what happened we should be understanding what happened and understanding how we got from there to here and why we got from there to here and why we don't do those things anymore but no i as a history major um i i, I don't like the idea of destruction of of the past um, because i think it helps us understand the past and as soon as we get rid of the past we don't get rid of the, the things that created that situation we actually remove our ability to understand those events and I think if we were not to have a memory we wouldn't be able to perform as well right now um, so the social memory is important and I, I, I completely denounce the destruction of all these monuments I think that it's horrible um, I think we need to protect the past um, because there's so little of it the further back we go and it it's important it's very important i think the idea of moving into a mindless future where we don't have perspective of where we came from is a very bad thing uh, because a lot of our humanisms came from rejecting those ideas and it wasn't necessarily by burning all the books but by saving the books and learning from them. Now the UN's gonna look at systemic racism. Um, I, I'd like the term systemic racialization a little bit better because if the UN starts ascribing or subscribing to the idea that race exists, um, then 
it's a problem to further entrench it in the global consciousness. And we don't need to say that it didn't exist in the past or that it's not going to exist in the future. It's just perspective to how we choose to view that. And I think that once you're on the other side of it, you have to view it as race does not exist. These are racialization as a means in which we differentiate, stereotype, and segregate. And if it's not happening on a basis of race, it may be on a basis of speech, on position of other appearance, hair color, eye color, dental health, physical health, physical well-being, disability. And if it's not on basis that are visually aware, then it will be based upon people's views and uh, beliefs and politics and religion. And the only enlightened perspective is to be accepting of people being individuals and different. And we obviously have our likes and our, our, our non-likes, but we need to come to the point of actually accepting people that they are what they are and they're entitled to be who they are and they are what they are and we shouldn't hate that. Um, but it's their ex expression and that if we have values that we feel are stronger, all we can do is share our selves with others and hopefully they will also have those same views and if they don't they're entitled to have different views because we don't have the same point of reference and same information we don't have the same experience uh, we don't have the same emotions we're different we're individual okay and then trump's health so yeah he's dying he's 74 um, he needs some stem cell therapy, like everybody else who's over 35. 